Now, what are the evacuation options for people with disabilities? Now, there are a number of ways to evacuate disabled people in a fire. However, in practice, persons must be considered on an individual basis as individual people with individual needs. Don't just blank it. Now, these options can be matched to the information about the building, the fire safety measures, and fire safety strategy to assist with the production of what we're covering, the jeeps and peeps. A person, a person may require different options for different buildings. For example, a visually impaired person may be, find it easy to get out of a bay of a building that's got good orientation standards and it's uncomplicated. However, in a complex building that's got poor signage, they might need assistance. Do you understand? Now, the options are not mutually exclusive. A disabled person may use a combination of these options. Now, assumptions should not be made about what each option suits, what type of people, and it shouldn't say it suits all. Managers should be prepared to discuss with disabled people what options there are and what provision they can make. And this comes under consultation. Once a person responsible for preparing an individual plan has contacted the disabled person, an interview should be organised to establish suitable evacuation procedures. And disabled people need to be consulted about their evacuation plan. They should be given information about the fire safety measures and building systems and their options. And they should also give them their, ask their opinions. And their experiences should be sought. And, big thing here, have respect for that person. Have respect. It is essential that disabled persons are asked relevant questions and in a way that produces the best evacuation plan. A suitable plan should be negotiated, taking into consideration the building, management and disabled person, what they can offer. Another thing, the person working with a disabled person to write the plan should not make assumptions about the abilities of the disabled person. So don't assume, because they're in a wheelchair, they can't get out. They might be able to, it might be painful to walk. So don't assume that everyone in a wheelchair can't walk. You need to discuss this. It should not be automatically assumed that a disabled person cannot leave the premises independently. Because some can, but like I say, they might find it painful to do so if they have to do a walk for a long time. So don't assume. Most disabled persons are likely to have a very clear idea of what it will take to get them out of the building. In some instances, the person will be able to facilitate their own evacuation, especially if suitable aids and adaptions are provided. So you can ask them. Different buildings may have different levels of adaption, and a disabled person may use different methods of evacuating in different buildings. Now, disabled people are expected to assist the planning process by giving, giving the information required for their own safe evacuation. So you're asking them for information, they should be giving you that information. You need that information to carry out this plan. Now, in order for disabled people to be willing to volunteer the information, managers should recognise their dignity and their right to independent egress and provide as much information as possible to everyone about the plans for the disabled person.